I'm always uh, amazed at, perhaps I shouldn't be, is the intensity with which many people will resist any mention of evolution. And it's because, just as you mentioned, to them it robs their lives of meaning and purpose and value, and it disqualifies any notion of morality. As if when you, take, when you say that we are creatures of matter, which we surely are, that we were shaped by evolution, which we surely were, that evolution produced our bodies, it produced our brains, and I think in many respects evolution produced our minds. Um, therefore, you say there's no such thing as morality, there's no such thing as right and wrong. Well, I don't think that follows at all, and I think it, fo I think it doesn't follow for a lot of reasons. In a way, what the evolutionary process does is to explore solutions to the world around us. One solution is to be small, uh, metabolize quickly, and grow quickly. That's what a bacterium does. Another solution is to be big and sexy and photosynthetic. That's what an oak tree does. So you may not think of an oak tree as very sexy. And another solution is to have a large, highly developed, highly adaptable, and programmable nervous system. And in a sense, that is our solution as well. And I'm uh, perfectly at home with the idea, and I think most biologists who work in the, in the evolution of human behavior are at home, with the idea that the evolutionary process has shaped our moral sense. That the process of kin selection, which is one of the, one of the ways in which altruistic behavior is generally assumed to have evolved, that this process has given us a sense of what's right and what's wrong that helps to shape our behavior. Now, you haven't asked any of us directly to answer that question, <laughs> which is, does evolution explain human nature? Don't worry, I'm about and, to get there. <laughs> and, and, and my quick answer, and I'll, I'll leave it open for the other panelists, would be that evolution, yes, explains human nature, but it doesn't explain all of it. 